Hi everyone, the small engine mechanic here. Today we are going to be servicing a Craftsman 3200 rider. First thing is to disconnect the headlights plug. Then remove the hitch pin and washer. Now, we can slide the hood off the clips. and lay it off to the side. Remove the air filter cover and the filter. This filter has definitely seen better days. This was around the intake. Hopefully none of it got past the filter. While the engine is cold we need to adjust the valves. And to do that, we need to remove the valve covers. You must disconnect the pulse hose from the fuel pump. It's the hose that goes from the pump to the valve cover. Now we can remove the covers. It should just come right off. Apparently, someone was in this engine before and used RTV sealant on the valve covers. But, we'll make it right. We will need to use a flat bar and a hammer to break the covers free. Yep, our TV. We'll have to clean it off later. And again on the other side. Now disconnect both spark plugs.
and using a 5 8 socket, remove both spark plugs. Always inspect the plugs for baked on oil or signs of overheating. Now rotate the engine in a clockwise direction until the intake valve goes in and comes back out. The bottom one moving is the exhaust valve. The top one is the intake valve. Then insert a small extension into the spark plug hole and continue to rotate the flywheel until the extension stops moving outward then turn the flywheel a little bit more until the extension goes back in about a quarter of an inch. And now you're ready to check and adjust the valves. This engine clearance is at 5 thousandths or 0 0.005 on the feeler gauge. This intake gap is way too loose. And the exhaust is too tight. It should be able to slide between the two with a little bit of friction. So, using a T40 Torx. Loosen the adjuster screw. and back off the jam nut some. Now, insert the feeler gauge in the intake valve and adjust the screw with the Torx until you just start to feel the resistance. Then tighten the jam nut and recheck the gap. You might need to do it a couple times to get it right. And we will repeat the same process on the opposite side. Rotate the engine. Exhaust then intake. Insert extension. Rotate to top. Then drop a quarter of an inch. Check the valves. Intake needs to be adjusted. But, the exhaust does not. Now that is done, 
we can install the right valve cover gaskets. While some models require RTV, this model does not. It requires gaskets. So like always, hand start all the bolts before tightening them. And, remember to reconnect the pulse hose. We will be installing some Champion Art C12YC plugs. Always install these by hand with hand tools.
and now reconnect the plug wires. Now we need to start it up to make sure everything is good so far and to warm up the oil for the oil change. Now that it's been running for a while, we need to remove the side panels. When you remove it there is a push pin on the bottom that will come out. Just push it back in when done. Now we have access to the fuel and oil filters. Using a can and a flexible funnel will make this so much cleaner to change. Now loosen the filter and let it drain. While that's draining we can go ahead and pump the old oil out. If you don't have a pump, there is a drain valve on the side of the engine. Now we can remove the old oil filter and install a new one. Put some oil on the seal of the new filter. and tighten it back up by hand only. Now changing the fuel filter. Remove the clamps from both sides of the filter.
Normally these type don't need to be pinched but, in this case. Pinch the supply side with vice grips. Remove the old filter and install the new one. Fuel filters are directional filters. The arrow on the filter should point towards the carburetor. Reinstall the clamps and remove the vice grips. Now, we're ready for new oil. I'm using 10W30 Kawasaki oil. It has a higher zinc content that prevents wear. Now check the level. It's on the full mark. But we will need to add more in a minute. This is a pressurized oil system so we need to run the engine for the filter to fill up. I'm using the old air filter till the new one comes in. I'm reinstalling the side covers. and the plastic push pin. Filter cover. Hood. Reconnecting the headlight plug. Pin and washer. Now, I'm placing a jack under the deck so I can take off the blades.
I never work under anything without a jack stand. Here's a view of the blades I'm removing. This is a three blade mower. Due to safety, I'm not going to try to record removing the blades. These are the blades removed. Definitely a little dull. But after some sharpening. Some balancing checks. This side is way too heavy. Some more sharpening. And getting them all balanced. Now they're sharp. Above all three spindles there are grease fitting that need to be greased. And there are two fittings on both sides of the front axle. One here and the other on the inner side of the wheel. Check the deck and drive belts. I just noticed an issue. Can you see it? The bushing is out of the mount. Now we can check the blade engagement and the engine power. Blade spin up. No vibrations from the deck. Engine sounds good. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And I guess this means, it looks like another one is good to go.